Hey guys, we got a critical topic that is truly the shape of things to come. The people are fighting against automation. And partly, they're fighting for better pay. So, I'll check it out because this video is a pretty good example of it. Tonight, on Monday this week, 45,000 dock workers operating 36 ports across America walked off the job as part of their union's first strike since 1977. These ports handle trillions of dollars worth of trade every year and are an essential bottleneck in global supply chains. This will affect everything from the fight with inflation to manufacturing jobs to just your ability to buy some junk off Timo. Oh, and I don't know if you've noticed, but this is also happening right before an election. The accusation has been made that this is just an opportunistic money grab directed at the most vulnerable part of the economy made by workers who are already earning much more than the national average. So, yeah, uh, two, two problem here. Like, how it's spinned is very tactical. The narrative is spinned against the workers. You should just uh, stand back in line. The second is that you call the workers greedy. Now, I would argue that it really doesn't matter how much the workers make or how much others make. What really matters is how much is being made, right? How much is the pot? And uh, are they getting that? Almost certainly not. Because then the company wouldn't be able to afford this automation. Essentially, the workers are buying their own replacement and then go home and and become hopeless, most likely. Why are these workers striking? And what the f happens now that they are? Workers from the Port of New Orleans say they were on the picket line at 1201. Union reps say they're demanding fair wages and an end to the use of robots. Tonight, crucial ports that fuel the American economy from New England to the Gulf Coast at a standstill after tens of thousands of union dock workers walked off the job. Yeah, fighting against automation. And this is what you see in a society where, <laughs> where robots are your competition. If the robots took away their job and they, they went home and like, okay, cool, you don't have to work, you get the same salary. It was like, they would be celebrating the robots. The current standoff is between the International Longshoremen's Association, which is a union representing dock workers, and the U.S. Maritime Alliance, which is negotiating on behalf of the ports. The union is asking for the standard renegotiation of pay and conditions, but the Maritime Alliance is arguing that their demands have gone too far. And, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but they might have a point. According to the Associated Press, the union's demands are a 77% increase in pay across all workers to be implemented over the next six years, and a complete ban on automation which could replace workers' jobs. The pay demand... Yeah. The panel automation will, will never happen. They'll, they'll find a way to automate. Even if they promise automation, they will automate. Payments are high, especially considering that longshore men earn well above the national average to begin with. According to the current agreement, the most experienced... It doesn't matter how much others are making. It only matters how much money is being made. Most experienced dock workers make $39 an hour, which is a base annual salary of just over $81,000 a year. That's before overtime, though, which at these ports can be plentiful, with a 2020 report by the Waterfront Commission suggesting that about a third of all these workers are making about $200,000 per year. The union is arguing that despite these... That seems more... Okay. ...earnings, the pay increase... That's a bit of an outlier bid overtime, right? This is not unreasonable, considering this is just an opening offer which is already being negotiated. And it's meant to be an incremental increase across six years, which means their pay will only increase by around 9% year to year. That's... Okay. But 9%. And part of that is inflation. So let's say, like, that's free. But that, that could be optimistic. But let's let's go with free. The 6% would be... Would, would that even cover their increasing experience? But let, let's say that that is a fair uh, offer to compensate for their experience, right? You got, you got a guy who's stayed with you for like 10 years and now they're gonna cost like 60% more money. Very simple math, but it's gonna be a little bit more. But yeah, is that unreasonable? It's probably a lot more than you are getting as a regular pay increase for your own job. But the union president, Harold Daggett, said in a statement that this is only to make up for the inflation spike in the last few years. If you still think that's a pretty sizable pay bump, it's probably a good sign that you should look into a union. If workers' wages had kept up with productivity, $200,000 wouldn't be a crazy income for someone putting up with overtime at a tough yeah, but you're you're not getting that because you have no leverage, right? It doesn't matter if you're it doesn't matter if you're making X money, right? You're you're basically priced against your competitors, right? Essentially the other uh workers who want to take your job. Tough job. Anyway. According to reports by ABS and the Associated Press, the union has already rejected a compromise offer from the shipping alliance of a fifty percent pay increase over the same time period. So as heated negotiations continue, their pay raise will be somewhere between these two numbers. Either way, Yeah. What's a complete ban on automation? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it, actually, the more they increase their, their salary without automation, without the promise of getting good automation, then the more screwed they are, the faster they're going to be automated. Either way, it will be a big win for the workers. But, surprisingly, pay is not the biggest thing that the Maritime Alliance and the Longshoremen's Association is butting heads over. The central focus of the union's demands is on blocking automation technologies. American ports already trail their Asian and European counterparts in terms of technologies to increase efficiency by automating tasks that otherwise need to be done manually by dock workers. Analysts have noted that most U.S. ports take longer to unload ships than these Asian and European ports. This represents a major additional cost to shipping companies who not only have to pay higher fees to ports that are paying 20 men to do what could have been the work of one man with the modern automated machinery, they are also stuck in port longer, instead of making more crossings in a given year. American workers, on average, are also paid better than their peers working the docks in Europe and especially Asia because of the generally high incomes in America and because of the strong negotiating 
negotiating power of this union. This means that American dock workers are more expensive and less efficient because of their historic resistance to automation. The associate director of supply chain resilience at Texas A&M University said in a report published by... Yeah, but this is just really highlights the stupidity of capitalism. The workers are incentivized to make work inefficient. <laughs> oh, man. ...by PBS that if shipping ports get much worse, shippers might send more cargo to Mexican or Canadian ports and then onto the U.S. by rail or truck, circumventing the union altogether. The ports have also offered the union a continuation of the language around automation, which is present in their current contract. But the union is pushing back on this since technology has changed so much since the last contract was signed that it's become difficult to predict how workers' jobs could be undermined with this new wave of AI and advanced robotics. Union workers believe that they are in a fight for the future of their jobs, and the ports are desperately trying to catch up with other global rivals. And it's unclear how either of them are going to back down from their non-negotiable positions. Oh, that's a very good point. If they don't automate the ports, then... It's going to be a travesty on a global scale. So you have to do it. So you cannot offer non-automation. Right? That's a good question. What's going to happen here? Because they have to automate the ports. And uh, they're just going to kick out these uh, 45,000 guys and like, um, I guess their families, with their families. I mean, uh, I hope they save some money because, uh, yeah, you're going to need it. So it's time to learn how many works to find out what shutting down a crucial supply chain means for everybody else in the world. This the ports affected by the strike handle roughly $5 billion a day in cargo volume and are responsible for almost all cargo entering America by ship, which is the cheapest form of international freight. The only other major channels to get goods in and out of the country are through our land ports with Canada and Mexico, as well as air freight, which is considerably more expensive and only suitable for small, light, and expensive products that aren't as sensitive to the increased shipping costs. Consumer goods are the immediate concern, as price rises have only just now come under control, and any supply disruptions will surely reverse a lot of that progress, especially since this is happening in the lead-up to the busiest retail months of the year. Companies have not been completely blindsided by this, and reports are indicating that they've been preparing for this eventuality for some months now by diverting shipment supports that are not on strike, as well as just bringing orders forward and warehousing additional stock. Most staple foods outside of imported specialties are also produced inside of America. So economists are confident that food prices shouldn't be impacted as heavily as other goods with a few exceptions. According to the American... That depends on how long they're gonna strike. Because, thing is, if they gonna give up easily, then it's a joke, right? They, they should basically never relent. That's gonna the work. American Farm Bureau, 76% of the nation's supply of bananas comes through these ports. So prices for these and other imported perishables are likely to be the first major casualty if these strikes last for more than a few days. Components to supply domestic manufacturing might be the biggest problem, because American factories rely on a vast international supply network that largely uses shipping containers to control costs. America produces more than 10 million cars a year, mostly for the domestic market. But thousands of smaller components are shipped from cheaper global suppliers before they are assembled onshore. And these supply chain disruptions could compound on top of other disruptions in the Middle East and the damages caused by Hurricane Helene. Even if these strikes have no actual impact on shipping, a big public supply chain issue like these port shutdowns is a great excuse for companies to justify price increases on consumer goods before the Christmas shopping season. Any pain felt by the American consumer will inevitably influence election decisions, which is the White House left with few good options as dog workers walk out. The White House has no good options, I would argue, because the dog workers pretty much have, have this in the bag. Mm. The truckers should also strike because this is the best time to do it. <laughs> yeah, what can the White House do? Nothing. And give in to their demands, pretty much, and then betray them later. Which is why the White House has reportedly been working around the clock to mediate a settlement between the two parties before its impacts start to be felt. Under the 1947 Taft-Hartley Act, the president has the authority to order dock workers to return to work because shipping ports are a strategically important asset. How are you going to do that? Hmm? Even if you're going to be very convincing about it, uh, dead bodies can't work. The current White House administration, which is indirectly part of the campaign for Kamala Harris, runs on a more pro-worker platform than their opposition, so they are stuck between a difficult decision. They could end the strike and make sure price increases or supply shortages don't affect consumers before the election, but that would undermine a lot of what they are campaigning on. The Longshoremen's Association certainly knew that this would be a pivotal factor in their decision to strike, which is added to the criticism that this is just an opportunistic way to hold the economy hostage to secure big pay increases for people already doing much better than the average worker. I know that covering both... Yeah, but if the companies can afford it, then yeah, it is their money. Essentially, the workers are, being, uh, are buying their replacement and then go home and lose everything, pretty much, or... <laughs> not gonna have a great opportunity from after this because like it's probably not gonna lead into a better job again like if they have savings that maybe that that is it even if you had ubi i mean the current ubi proposals were like you know you make like one thousand a month or maybe like two thousand a month something like that so not that impressive i mean you would be losing a job that actually makes at least uh five times more possibly ten times more right <laughs> so th these workers would be immediately priced out of their living area they would have to move to some back end of nowhere maybe they could you know, assuming even the ubi here so yeah but basically their life would be instantly ruined if they lose this job i mean the only thing you can do is that you retire them right you pay their salary uh as a century forever when you replace them for machines
And that would be a good way to save face. But also the other workers would get some ideas about this. So, interesting. We'll see how it uh, progresses. Both sides of this argument is just a surefire way to make everybody angry. But even my own community poll has shown that people are generally a lot less sympathetic to these workers' demands than they were to other strikes like the auto workers. Okay. Anyone who's angry about this is just not thinking. You're not like, oh my god, those dog workers make a little bit more money than me. They should get back in line. You're not thinking. <clears throat> a workers union. If money is being made and you're not getting it, that, that is unfair. That is the very definition of unfair. Um, I recall some kind of like a uh, kind of experiment where like uh, for one day the workers got the entire salary in like a in the restaurant and they made like four four or five times more money. So that that's kind of the money is being made and you're not getting it. Genius. Then there is the long-term impact of refusing to adapt some level of automation. If you were a long-term man, it would make sense why you would be arguing against systems that have already proven to increase efficiencies in other global ports. Even if doing things by hand or with basic machinery is slower and more expensive, it's more jobs and less of a chance that you'll be replaced with an automated loader. Even if it does just work out to be a negotiating tactic to use as a bargaining chip to secure their whole pay increase, it's going to be something that is a point of contention with more union strikes in the future. AI content. Yeah, but this is a big problem. Like automation will come for you, and we live in an era where you're screwed if that happens. And what are you gonna be? A YouTuber, or like a TikToker? I don't know. Like, honestly, what, what if, like, jobs, if, if you can, can, cannot get a job, what can you do? Suppose you don't have savings and you can live off that. Suppose you can't retire. What are you going to do? Content creation was the central focus of the Hollywood writer strike. And on the flip side, you know that if companies could replace all their workers with automated machinery, they would. We would probably just call it good business. So it only makes sense that unions representing the workers would take exactly the opposite stance to be directly opposed to systems that are almost always anti-worker. So yes, they are probably a bit greedy. But maybe that's just what workers need to be for it. I don't like the concept of greedy here. <laughs> because if money is being made and they're not getting it, then is that greedy? Suppose you made X value and you didn't get X value. Are you being greedy for wanting X value or even a bigger part of it? For a change. The story is changing so fast that there's a good chance that the situation will be totally different. Not to be fair from the perspective of on the other side, they were thinking like, oh my god, you know, workers are a massive liability. We need to automate everything immediately. Uh, I guess we don't care uh, what happens to those people. <laughs> also, it's it's really good money, right? You don't have to pay the salary of like 45,000 people and you know all the people who get automated. It's also like, like the robots can't rebel against you. So yeah, you need to automate everything. And also, it, it's a massive liability because like, if they shut down the ports, then what? It just collapses America? Imagine if they did this for like a month. What's going to happen to America? This just cannot go. Probably give it like a few days and like uh, Biden's going to send down some convincing. We'll see. Different by the time you are watching this video. I'm going to be posting small updates in addition to the regular articles published on my totally free email newsletter. So if you want to stay up to date, please consider signing up. The Academy sucks. I mean, it depends. Depends on how rich you are. <laughs> and how much money you're making. Up to that in the link in the description. If automation is allowed to completely replace all jobs, then the next problem for companies is going to be who to sell their products to. Unfortunately, I think ultimately we should be a society that celebrates automation. You'll be like, hell yeah! You you see the washing machine and like, yes, celebrate, right? This is what you should feel when automation happens, when AI happens. Not like, oh my god, the dread is like, okay, I get, guess I'm gonna be economically irrelevant and like, that's it. Unfortunately, they already have a solution, and you are probably not going to like it. So go and watch my. Yeah. I, I like the idea of UBI, but it's kind of like a just kind of tie people over. It's it's not exactly just great. If you just give people enough money to afford shelter and food and like with no hope of anything more, no opportunities, which might be the future. I don't know. It's going to be uh, perfect, but it certainly should be at least uh, something we have.